all of us here, every single one of us, we share a specific experience. We experienced history. We experienced the war, the invasion against Ukraine, the invasion of Ukraine by imperialist Russia. We heard from Comrade Pavel that there was a convoy. He gave us detailed uh, information about the forces behind, how, to, how we organized the convoy, what was the purpose of it, uh, and all of this. It was a very important experience. But historically speaking, it was just one of so many important experiences we made. The International Workers' Aid to Ukraine, the campaign that we shared, that we joined, that we organized together, it already started, it already started, believe it or not, 40 years ago. It started with a miners' strike in Britain in the 1980s against Margaret Thatcher. When the militant trade unions of the British miners organized a heroic strike for a whole year. At that time, Bosnian workers from Tuzla, Bosnian workers organized solidarity and collected money and sent it to the British miners to show international solidarity of the workers. In the year of 1992, a terrible war started in my home country, in Bosnia. So they organized the convoy, not one, but many convoys, with humanitarian aid, and they brought it, starting with the year 1993, they brought it from various European countries to the Bosnian people, to the Bosnian workers in Tuzla. And when we today organize our convoys in solidarity with the people in Ukraine, we stand on the shoulders of all of these events in history of international workers' solidarity, very concretely, even with the same slogans. I want, I want to share a certain experience, a, a certain balance of the Bosnian war with you, because I think it is very crucial, it is very crucial today for the support of the Ukrainian workers. The Bosnian people, my family, my friends, we were slaughtered in the Bosnian war. With the first day of the siege of Sarajevo, of the capital of Bosnia, with the first day, more than 300 grenades were thrown at the capital. Snipers positioned have just shot at everybody who they've seen. Be it a child, be it an old person, be it a pregnant woman, it did not count for them. They just shot and, and, and killed so many of us. 50,000 tons of artillery was just, you know, just thrown <laughs> at, at, at Sarajevo. And, as if it was not enough, the whole country, the whole country was under a war for more than three years. Our, our massacre of Butcher, so to say, was the massacre of Srebrenica. Today, in one week, on the 11th July, it will be the anniversary of the beginning of the massacre in Srebrenica. In 1995, more than 8,000, more than 8,000 men, were, mostly men, were killed within the span of, the, from the 11th July until the 19th July. More than 8,000 were killed. Um, they were just put in graves, <laughs> rest, uh, uh, it, it was a terrible, a terrible event that, go, that, that marked, I'm sorry, I'm always getting emotional about this point, it marked the biggest, the biggest massacre since, at the time, 
uh, in Europe since the end of the Second World War. It was a massacre against the Bosnian Muslim people. The soldiers, uh, the Serbian soldiers, protected by the United Nations, the soldiers of the United Nations who were there, they protected this whole, 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 whole uh, massacre. The Serbian soldiers, they took the men, they forced them to just drop their pants so that they can see, <laughs> so that they can see if these are Muslim men or not. Because like Jewish men, many Muslim men are, um, I don't know how to say it, chase, circumstance, yes. All of this happened, all of this happened under the protection, under the shield with the hand on it of the United Nations and of their soldiers. And if it was not enough that the war had this huge toll on us, they also, they forced the end. After the massacre, they forced the end of the war. They said, it's over now. The Western imperialist forces said, it's over now. And they said, we will take now the control over the country. They forced a constitution with a Dayton declaration that is still today, that is still today in operation, and that had led to an ethnic segregation in the country. They have opened the doors for capitalist parasites of various countries, mostly from Western imperialist countries, from the European Union, uh, and so on, to enter the country and just to make as much profit as they can from the workers. Today, 15% of the people in Bosnia, they have no access to basic stuff like food, like healthcare, like clean water. The unemployment rate, it oscillates around 50 to 60% of the people. 49% of the country is organized, administ administrated by the Serbian um, ethnicity, which only makes up 30% of the population. And you have these parasitic capitalists who, who do their profits in a way that is killing people. The Serbian nationalists, they have bombed our country. They have killed us. But the Western imperialists, they opened the doors and they themselves came and they took everything from us, our blood, everything we have. Um, Magda has told you that uh, Krivirich is an industrial uh, center in Ukraine, a very important industrial center. Same was true for Tuzla. Uh, today in Tuzla, the former big complex of the chemical industry, the factory, the Hack factory, uh, which has produced uh, chloryl alkalite. They drop the factory, they just go away, and then <laughs> workers have tried to do their best um, and try to collect material from the old factory to sell it, to kind of, you know, survive the day. They started to die like flies, because the chemicals, they have just infected their whole lungs, um, the, the whole body, and some of them, they just dropped dead from one second to the other. <laughs> I come to an end now. Um, in the factory of the Dita workers, more than 40 months, no wage was paid. Also a factory in Tuzla. I said to you, we, all together, we experienced history with the start of the war. And with this experience of history, we have the duty, we have the duty to learn and not to repeat the mistakes of the past. And the big danger today is that Ukraine might, might have the same history as Bosnia. And we need to stop this. We have to need to stop this now. International worker solidarity means to organize solidarity to strengthen the rebels uh, in Ukraine who are fighting not only against Russian imperialism, but also against Western imperialism. On behalf of my organization, the RCT, on behalf of uh, the feminist collective um, that I'm in, Defensoria Segeneros Internacional, 
Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you very much to Adele Kobas.